Yo everyone, welcome to Amps Pedals and Pickups, it's your boy Nathan here, and today we're going to take a look at Amp Sims and Nam Captures and how to get them reacting as accurately as possible. Now you might have seen some stuff on this topic or maybe you're not too sure about it altogether, but I'm going to approach things as layman friendly as possible because this is the kind of thing that can get really confusing really quickly, but it's really not a confusing topic, I just think you have to approach it properly. And once you get there, you'll totally understand what's going on. Alright, so before we look at amp sims, let's take a look at real amps for a second. You know, I've got a real amp sitting back there, 6505 plus, I've got a bunch of different guitars, and I can plug any of those guitars into that amp, and I really don't need to question anything. It just works how it works in the analog domain. I can smash the front end of the amp with a boost pedal. Um, if I want to make things quieter, I can roll off the volume knobs on the guitars. You get what I'm talking about. None of this stuff matters in the analog domain. Everything just goes to the amp and you figure it out. You dial things in, you get where you're going, you have a great time and you're done. So to get where I'm going with this stuff with the amp sims, there's kind of two basic things. There's the amp level, and let's just say for argument's sake that an amp is sitting here, and then let's just say my guitar level is sitting here. And if we really want to talk about guitar levels, uh, let's just cherry pick my Gibson SG. It's a little bit quieter on the pickups than say my bare knuckle pickups. Uh, then I've got some Fishman Fluence Moderns, which are even hotter pickups. So there's a whole different range of volumes that can hit this analog amp. And then of course, if you do a boost pedal, you know, the volume might be up there, or if you roll off that guitar knob, so you can almost say that you almost have like a range of sounds hitting the amp. And it doesn't matter, like we keep talking about. It doesn't matter how you hit that amp. The amp will just respond accordingly. Obviously, it's going to work a little bit less hard for low gain things. Uh, it's going to be savage and overdriven with high gain stuff sort of hitting it. That's just the nature of this stuff. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Um, if we take this analog amp here, and if we swap things out and start talking about digital amps, then this level here actually disappears. And what we need to know now is the digital representation of this amp level. Um, and this digital representation is just based on what the company used as their input spec or input specification. Um, you know, different companies, you can have wildly different levels. It literally just comes down to what they decided to use. There's no standard in the digital domain. All right, so let's keep talking about these numbers here. I'm using an RME interface and the input that I'm using is 13 dBU. Uh, so we'll just put that over here. So I'm at 13 dBU when I plug into this thing. And then we'll just take like a neural DSP plugin. They've told us that they've calibrated their setup to 12.2 dBU. So 13 and say 12.2, very, very close. Just all I need to do is raise my stuff up by 0.8 to hit that. And now I'm at exactly the same specification as what they've said. Now remember, this is a range of tones. So it doesn't matter if I'm using a crazy Fishman Fluence, like super hot, boosted thing, it's going to hit their amp sim and the amp sim is going to react exactly how they've programmed things. Um, you know, if I was at say 18 dBU, like all the way down here, and I was using my Fishman Fluence um, setup, yes, it's a really hot pickup, but it's hitting the amp sim at such a low point that, you know, the amp sim is probably going to react super weak. It's not going to sound right. Um, that's why you match the input level spec. So you just want to make sure the sort of baseline that you're hitting it is accurate, and then you can do whatever you want from there. And if we keep looking at this analogy, um, so that was a pretty simple setup going from 13 to 12.2. Some amp sims are at 5.2, so I'd have to gain my stuff up all the way to 5.2. And if I'm at 13 dBU over here and something's at 18 dBU, I'd have to lower things to hit that 18 dBU. And once again, within that range, I can do whatever I want, but it's just about setting your levels to match exactly what the amp sim sort of expects. All right, so you probably have some questions at this point, like what's the DBU level on my setup? And how do we know what amp sim is expecting what DBU level? Well, congratulations, because these are the right questions to be asking. So let's start with, uh, you know, how do we know what level an amp sim is expecting? Well, the only way to actually find out this information is to talk to the amp sim manufacturer directly. For some reason, they don't seem to be putting this stuff in manuals or publishing it online. Um, so Ed from Mirror Profiles, he's been doing a bunch of legwork on this topic. He's been championing uh, this kind of info for a while. So I'll leave a link down to all his stuff. Super, super helpful. Uh, but yeah, he's been speaking to AmpSim companies and getting this sort of info out of them. Um, for instance, Neural DSP has calibrated their AmpSims to 12.2, like I said before. Um, STL Tones, like Tone Hub, Amp Hub, all the tonalities, they've been calibrated to 5.2 dBU and so on. There's a spreadsheet link below with a bunch of info from different companies. So go check that out. Heaps of good info there. All right, so let's say we know what DBU an amp sim is expecting, but what's my DBU or what's your DBU and how do you match things um, to make sure that the amp sim is working properly? So there's an easy way to do this and a less than easy way to do it. So let's go with the easy way first. Um, in my example, I said I was plugging straight into the RME interface. The manual and the RME software tell me that this is calibrated to 13 DBU. Um, 
On the RME specifically, there's actually a bunch of different options, um, but most interfaces just quote one number. It's very easy to see. But here I can see on this setting, the input for here is 13 dBU. So if you're plugging straight into an interface, just check the manual. It should be very easy to see what level you're using. Um, Ed Spreadsheet also has some quick, handy DBU info for common interfaces. Um, so use these as a guide if you want, but to be 100% sure uh, of what you're working with, just grab your manual and triple check things. Of course, if you have any questions, uh, leave a comment below, join my Discord, and we can definitely help you out. So if you want to know specifically on how to match things, it's just a volume trim or some sort of clean boost. Um, so if you're like me and you've got a 13 dBU interface and you need to get to 5 dBU, you need, 8 D you need to raise things by 8 dB to get there. You could do that. Um, directly from your interface. Most interfaces have gain, so I could just gain things up by 8 dBU. Um, I could do it in the door with a volume trim plugin. Most AmpSim plugins will have an input trim there, and that's probably the easiest way to go. But like I said, there's many choices. You just need a clean boost to get where you're going. And obviously, if you need to come down, you need to do the same thing. You can do it in the door inside the plugin as well. So all of that stuff is for AmpSims and uh, hopefully just get us going with this topic. But let's talk about NAM captures for a second. Um, hopefully you know about Neural Amp Modeler. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, um, I'll leave a link to some of the other videos that I've covered it. Super, super great stuff there. Um, but Neural Amp Modeler or any capturing tech really has the same problem as AmpSims, but it's actually way, way, way more prevalent. Um, you know, because we need to know our input level, which we can figure out, but we also need to know what the digital reamp level is expecting. So much like we needed to know what an amp sim was expecting, we need to know what the person has calibrated their setup when they did the reamps. You know, one person could have done a reamp here, there, 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 there. The same person could have done a hundred different reamps at a hundred different levels. If you just go and start twisting your knobs to sort of just like hear things by ear and just sort of figure things out on the fly, those are the sorts of results you're going to be getting. And what happens is, um, you know, you might have one jackpot capture that you hit, sounds great. But then if the next one's down there, you might be like, oh, this one's a little bit fuzzy. And then if the next one's up here, you're like, hmm, that, that one's a little bit limp. And it sort of leaves you in limbo where you're just like guessing things. You know, before I looked into this whole amp sim input level topic, um, I was just doing captures however I was doing them. And even when I look back at my old captures that I did in the beginning, I didn't even know what they were using. You know, I did all that effort to just go back and guess things when I try and use those captures. Um, it just makes a lot of sense to jot things down on your setup or conform your setup to some kind of reamp level standard so that when you're sharing these tones or you're reusing them yourself at a later point in time, you know what reference level they were using. So for me personally, I've just arbitrarily chosen 13 dBU as my reamp specification. Um, like I said, because my RME input level is 13 dBU, I don't need to adjust anything. I've just calibrated my reamp level to 13 dBU. I hit everything at 13 dBU. I don't need to think about it. I pull up my own captures. Everything's at Unity. Very, very easy. And of course, if somebody else grabs my captures, I'm gonna tell them that it's at 13 dBU. So if they have an interface that's at 10 dBU, they just need to come down to 13. If they have an interface at 18, they just need to come up to 13. It's very easy. They can just adjust things on their end to match it and go from there. And once again, just to reiterate, this is all about hitting things with accuracy. So if I know that somebody's capture is at this point, um, I can hit it straight at that point. It sounds how it sounds. I can boost things up, I can go down, but I know that we're at a unity level, everything's sounding great, and I can do whatever I want to mangle that sort of sound. Um, if I didn't know what this was, and let's just say for argument's sake, I was hitting it there, I might be like, mm, this is a little bit limp, and then I might raise my input, and then I might think that this point sounds good, but really it's a little bit too hot. Sure, sure it might sound great, like that's totally fine. But you know, then I might add a pedal to it, but then the pedal sort of doesn't react properly. Then maybe I lower the gain a little bit. I'm just guessing and it's just, it's a bit of a time waste if I'm completely honest. If everyone just sort of mentioned what their spec was, you could just hit it. You don't need to think about it. Just go with the sounds from there. If it sounds bad from there, maybe that amp and whatever combo just wasn't for you. But yeah, it just makes things easier if people had their DBU spec when they did their reamps. I know that was a lot to go through. So hopefully uh, everything here makes sense. This is sort of like an intro video to everything. I tried to break things down in a way that's uh, pretty digestible, but there is uh, two big things that I didn't cover here. And I'm gonna leave those for a follow-up video because it would kind of be overkill for sort of intro topic. And that's uh, the first one is, how do you figure out your DBU input level when you're using an external DI box or some kind of external preamp? And that's because if you have something external affecting the signal coming in, even if it's coming into a line level of 13 dBU, it's almost like having another stage before it. You know, you can crank a preamp, so that power hitting that 13 dBU is going to be a lot higher, uh, or conversely lower, whatever you're doing with the preamp. So in those situations, 
we need to basically measure the voltage of that signal coming in with the multimedia and multimeter and work it out from there. Uh, really, it's not hard, but it's just a few extra steps um, versus plugging straight into an interface, reading the manual and not having to do anything. Um, but the process is simple. It just, it's a few extra steps to get that done. And the second thing that I didn't cover is basically the exact same thing, but for reamping. So how do you measure your reamp levels? And uh, I really look at this as like approaching it from one of two different ways. I guess the first way is like, I love my reamp setup. I don't want to touch anything. I don't want to mess with my levels. We can just measure it, get that number down. Then you can have that in your back pocket. You can quote it to people when you're making your reamps and sharing your captures out there with the world. Um, or if you're like me, maybe you want to adjust your setup to a specific value. Like maybe you want to adjust it to 13 dBU, 10 dBU, 18 dBU, whatever you want to do. Um, we can just measure those things, then make some gain adjustments to match whatever DBU spec you're aiming for. So all this information exists. Uh, Ed, who created the spreadsheet with all the handy information, he's already done videos for this stuff. So I'll link those down below, but I'm still gonna be doing my own one very soon. So yeah, there we go. Input levels and input accuracy demystified. Um, as always, let me know in the comments if you have any questions about this stuff. If you have any questions just about anything in general, let me know as well, because I think there's a few things, there's a few roadblocks that people seem to get caught up on. I've had this conversation with like 30, 40 people. And you can sort of see that aha moment where they start to get things, but then they still bring up, oh, but what about this? But what about this? But what about this? So maybe I'll bring out an FAQ version. Uh, and to be honest, sometimes I don't even have the answer. So I'll need to talk to someone like Ed and get those answers. So if you have any questions about uh, how anything works, let me know in the comments and we'll get back to it in a follow-up video. And as always, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. You're a legend. I'll catch you on the next one. And hopefully when I download your NAM captures, you'll have the DBU spec in there.